So let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you through in the name Jesus of Jesus Christ and the help of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for for the six days. That thank you, Lord God, for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for all the things that you have done to us. And we thank you also, Lord God, for the blessings and for this another Sabbath day that you given to us where we are here to gather that we to learn your words and also Lord God we ask the Holy Spirit for us give us the Holy Spirit that also to the speakers give her give him understanding that that he can deliver um, they can speak his your words and also for us the listeners or the viewers give us um, give us more understanding and knowledge that um, touch our hearts and minds that all your words will be imparted in our in our hearts and also Lord God help us for this Sabbath day to keep us to keep this holy until the sunset and remind us every day for this remind us every day and dictate our hearts and minds that we will honor and this Sabbath will honor your Sabbath day and um, forgive us also to all of our sins in thoughts words and in deeds and also Lord God um, to those who are in sick and health heal them in the Sabbath day and answer all our prayers, especially our private prayers and special prayers according, according to your plans and your perfect will. And all this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To those who are watching us on Facebook, as it is Friday for you, most likely it is Friday, I would like to wish you a happy preparation day and may God be with you during the course of the day. And to those who are observing Sabbath, God's holy seven-day Sabbath, to you I wish you happy Sabbath. To the brethren here and those in Mindanao, Mayong Gabi, Sa'adlang, Igpapaulay. Let's praise God with Psalm chapter 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise Him, all ye people, for His merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Through Pastor Craig's beautiful video sermons and Sister Addie's video presentations for the past many years, we've been fed with wholesome biblical instructions on how to grow spiritually before our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Yeshua, Yehovah, and in our worship of him worship in the King James Bible the word worship appears 188 times including 22 times in the book of Revelation and we're living in the age of the book of Revelation aren't we what does worship mean or how is worship defined as Worship can be defined as the expression of reverence and adoration of the Most High God, our Elohim, or to a false god as they do in false religions. Thus, worship has a religious connotation. In these end times, and I assure you, we are living in these end times, aren't we? We see people worshiping themselves or the sun, or golden calves, as we saw with ancient Israel, statues, or even cows, even pigs, or actors, or singers, or athletes, and even Mary, or even a pope. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 21 to 39, we read about Elijah's faith in God and how he was God's vessel to destroy Baal's prophets and more important how the people who saw God's hand move turned to God and worshiped him again in first Kings chapter 18 verses 21 and with verses also 36 to 39 we read and Elijah came unto all the people and said how long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. He 
said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, as we all are. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Turn your hearts back to God, please. We are in the end times. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, those pagans, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Pagans who worshipped a false god, Baal, turned to the true Christian God who rules the universe. Amen. In that passage, God destroyed Baal and his false system of worship. God shall do likewise with the dragon, which is Satan, the beast, which is the Pope, and the false prophet, which symbolizes the false Sunday-keeping Protestant and evangelical preachers who deceive their followers into following them and their false doctrines as part of their false system of worship. Like the false prophets of Baal, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet speak with an unclean spirit that comes out of the mouth, out of the mouth, like frogs. In Revelation 16, verse 13, frogs capture their prey with their tongue, which again is in their mouths. Like does the devil, the Pope, and the false Sunday Protestant and evangelical preachers who captivate their audience with their false non-biblical doctrines and false unclean system of false worship, including Sunday worship, Xmas and Easter, which are not commanded by God in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. If someone can show me where Christmas is, or Xmas, sorry, Xmas is commanded by God in the Bible, provide me the verse. Or likewise for Sunday worship. The analogy between Baal's prophets and today's beast and false prophet is quite striking since they both both lead their followers astray into following a false system of worship speaking of false worship in first kings chapter 9 verse 6 god says but if you shall at all turn from following me ye or your children and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. In Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 6, we all know that beautiful commandment of God. God warns his people against the false worship of graven images, including statues and idols. God warns his people to not bow down to these graven images, nor serve them. Dear Roman Catholics, when you bow down to graven images, whether they be idols or statues of Mary, you break God's holy second commandment because of your worship of idols and statues and graven images. Oddly enough, this is the same second commandment of the Most High, against graven images which is not part which is not part of the modified version of the ten commandments of the babylonian roman catholic church and then you wonder why inside the their churches church buildings there are graven images and statues and of various so-called saints including mary with people bowing down on their knees to such ceramic statues and praying to these statues which cannot hear or smell or speak 
God speaks against that in Psalm chapter 115, verses 4 to 8. God visits the iniquity or sins. Sorry, what does God say about that? When you do false worship of these statues, continuing with that second commandment of God in Exodus chapter 20, this time with verses 5 and 6, God says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. God visits the iniquity or sins of those who break his holy second commandment, but will show mercy unto those who love him and keep his holy ten commandments. Because the saints of God worship God in spirit and in truth. And the holy ten commandments of God represent truth as per Psalm chapter 119, verses 142 and 151. Concerning true worship, Christ adds in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Again, the Holy Ten Commandments of God represent truth. In Psalm chapter 119, verses 142 and 151, of which God's holy seventh day Sabbath commandment is part of. The great apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 24, verse 14, but I confess unto thee, as he was talking to the king, I think it was King Agrippa, but I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I. The God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul says that he worships God, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. So must we as followers of Christ. In Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, which is God's first end time angel's message, we read about God calling his people to the true worship of him, which points back to what we just read in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7 says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him and nobody else, not Mary, not the Pope, not Shiva, not Allah, not Buddha, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Very beautiful words that we also read in another passage, which I will talk about later. From this very important Bible passage in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, the gospel that Christ preached is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Not the prosperity gospel, Mr. Kenneth Copeland, or Joel Olstein, or Creflo Dollar. Yes, that's his last name, 
dollar. Creflo dollar. Hmm. We are to worship God and keep the gospel of the kingdom of God, which you and you also and I can be part of upon true sincere faith in Christ, the son of the living God, who is our rock and our salvation. And by keeping his holy ten commandments of love through the Holy Spirit of truth. Upon reading Matthew chapter 4, verses 17 and 23, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, Luke chapter 9, verse 60, and Acts chapter 1, verse 3, we read that Christ preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. Not the prosperity gospel, folks. They're Protestants. Philip also preached the gospel of the kingdom of God in Acts chapter 8, verse 12. So did Paul, the great apostle Paul, in Acts chapter 19, verse 8, Acts chapter 20, verse 25, Acts chapter 28, verses 23 and 31. That's the gospel spoken of in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Second, according to Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, we are to fear God and give glory to him. We do so by keeping his holy ten commandments of love. And God's holy ten commandments, folks, are not old covenant. God says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16, that he's going to write his laws, my laws, into the hearts of into the minds of his people as part of his current covenant. So the Ten Commandments are not archaic. They're part of the, of the current covenant of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. King James Bible, please. And also, by keeping the Holy Ten Commandments of love from God, by doing so, we fear God. As per Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Because fearing God and keeping his holy ten commandments, they're linked together. And it is our duty to do so. As per what the preacher says, King Solomon, in that beautiful verse. Third, according to God's end time first angel's message, again in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, we are to worship God... Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. As I said before, what I just read is eerily similar to another Bible passage. God's holy seven-day Sabbath commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, identifies God as the creator who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. All that's lacking is the fountains of waters. Thus, the true worship of God is directly linked to the observance of God's holy seven-day Sabbath commandment, not Sunday. And that's why Satan, his Roman Catholic Church, and her harlot Protestant and Orthodox churches hate God's holy seven-day Sabbath commandment. That's why a few pay close attention. That's why a few Roman Catholic scholars in the United States, including Adrian Vermuli, remember that name, who used to work with President Trump in his first administration, and Chad Pecknold, a professor at the Catholic University of America, are calling for the enforcement of Sunday laws. They said it with their own mouth. They said it clearly, word for word, we're calling for the enforcement of Sunday laws, including Sunday rest and worship, which goes contrary to God's seven-day Sabbath commandment, which is part of God's true worship of him in spirit and in truth. Even Satan tried to deceive Christ by asking Christ to worship him, <laughs> him being Satan, asking Christ to worship him. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 9 to 11, we read about Christ's temptation at the hands of the devil. By that time, Christ had not eaten for about 40 days. So Christ said to the devil, 
who in his arrogance tried to make Christ worship the devil. <laughs> and Christ, being weak, without food for about 40 days, but filled with the Holy Spirit, said to that puny little dog, Satan, it is written in the Bible, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Not Mary, the Pope, Allah, Buddha, or Shiva. Christ says clearly that we are to worship God and him only shall thou serve. Again, not Mary, not the Pope, or any church organization. In the same way, Satan tried to make Christ worship him. Satan will try this time to make Christ's people, his followers, to worship him. Him being Satan, through his Roman Catholic Church's false system of worship with Sunday laws starting first in the United States. In the United States, the second beast of Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 to 16. Pay close attention, please, and you too watching us. The Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation's Project 2025 is pushing for Roman Catholic non-biblical doctrines to be introduced in American government policy and in social policy with the Vatican's Common Good Initiative. Common Good Initiative, of which Sunday laws are part of. What's so special about Heritage Foundation? They are a conservative think tank group in the United States, which unites uh, at least 100 conservative groups, all of which believe in Project 2025. The head of the Heritage Foundation, listen to this now, his name is Kevin Roberts. He's Roman Catholic. President Trump, Donald Trump, wants to be re-selected again, doesn't he? On November 5th, 2024. His vice presidential pick is J.D. Vance, James Dean Vance, who converted to Roman Catholicism in 2019. Now, what's so special about James Vance and Kevin Roberts? Well, first of all, they're both Roman Catholics. And they're both very good friends. They're very good friends. So Mr. Roberts will tell into the ear of J.D. Vance, hey, J.D., come on, let's pass these laws, Roman Catholic doctrines into your American government. Okay, let's do that. Oh, okay. And then at the same time, Kevin Roberts, again, who is Roman Catholic, staunch Roman Catholic, I may say, and I just found out tonight before worship services that he has close ties with the Vatican's Opus Dei military arm of the Vatican. Opus Dei, is similar to the Jesuits. If you know anything about the Jesuits, they're not very nice people. It's their way, and there's no other way. They have their grand rule. I'm going to paraphrase their grand rule. The crow is white, and the snow is is black if the church hierarchy says so. How clear can it be? They're trying to control your mind. If you see the crow, well, you see the crow is black, and snow, as we all know, is white. But the Jesuits in their corrupt satanic minds are trying to convince you and you and I, that the snow is black and the crow is white. If the church, Roman Catholic Church, 
tells you so. It's all about mind control. And to deviate you away from Christ. Sunday laws, including enforce Sunday rest and worship, is part of the false system of worship of the Vatican beast. The first beast in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, and verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter. Enforce Sunday rest and worship will be the mark of the Vatican beast. On the flip side of the coin, public weekly seven-day Sabbath rest and worship, of which we, you and I, follow, is part of God's true system of worship. Again, God calls upon everyone to come to the true worship of Him in spirit and in truth, in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, and Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. But the world's citizens, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, will worship the Pope in Revelation 13, verse 8. Let me read you the verse. Again, verse 8 of Revelation 13 is part of the Vatican's description in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10. And verses 17 and 18. And all, the, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Who's him? The Pope. He's the head of the Vatican. Whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. How are they going to worship the Pope? How? By accepting the Pope's mark with their minds, which is found in their, or in their hand by not working on Sunday when these laws, Sunday laws, shall be enforced. And Sunday is the false papal Sabbath. Sunday is simply a Roman Catholic institution. It's not commanded by God anywhere in the 31,102 Bible verses in the King James Bible. It's not there. It's not commanded by God. Only the seven-day Sabbath is blessed, hallowed, and sanctified by God. No other day. Again, a person will worship the Vatican's Pope by accepting with their mind, which is in their forehead, the Pope's mark of enforced, enforced weekly public, public Sunday rest and worship. And thus, they will be able to buy and sell according to Revelation 13, verse 17. If you accept Sunday laws out of fear or because you want to keep your job, if you, kept, if you accept Sunday laws, you'll be accepting the mark of the beast. The beast is the Vatican. And thus, you'll be able to buy and sell. But for how long before God's seven last plagues fall upon you? For accepting Satan's Pope's mark rather than obeying God and to worship him in spirit and truth of which God's holy seven day Sabbath commandment is part of God's holy ten commandments which again represent truth this evil mark of the Vatican beast goes contrary to God's holy and permanent permanent seven day Sabbath which is part of God's true system of worship. Why do I say permanent? Read Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23. Please read Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, Revelation 16, verse 2, Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. In all of these four verses, the mark of the beast is direct, directly linked to worship. The false system of worship of the Vatican beast of which the Pope is head of. But what does Christ say when he spoke to that little dog, Satan? We are to worship God and no one else. So says Christ when he said to the devil, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou sh shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. 
shalt thou serve. We ought to obey God rather than men, says God's apostles in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. We are to obey God and put him first above all that there is above men, including the Pope, including Kevin Roberts, including Donald Trump, including J.D. Vance, including everybody else, Adrian Vermudi, and Carl Pecknall, who are calling for Sunday laws. As the holy angel of God says in John to John in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, worship God. Worship God. Worship the Creator in spirit and in truth. As per the holy words of Christ, again, in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. May the love, peace, and grace of the Most High God, who wants you and all of us to worship Him in spirit and in truth, be with you in these troubling and persecuting end times. So be it. Amen. It is now time to pray and give thanks to the Creator to bring an end to this to these Sabbath evening worship services. Abba Father, eternal God, source of eternal life, and who is perfect love, we praise Thee and we worship Thee and Thee only, along with Your Son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Yeshua. Thank you, Abba Father, for Sabbath day. Thank you for life that you offer to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our great God and our Savior, the King, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Abba Father, we say thank you in the name of your Holy Son, the Messiah, Elohim manifested in the flesh. We say thank you, Father Abba, for who you are, eternal life and love. And so is Christ. We say thank you for all these blessings including the forgiveness of sins upon, upon sincere repentance. We say thank you for all these wonderful blessings through the Holy Spirit of truth. And the people of God say, Amen.